All right, what's going on dudes, and welcome to episode 6 of Let's Build an Adventure Map. Once again, in this video I'll be going over a build which I constructed in the live stream, and I must say I'm pretty excited about it because I had quite a bit of fun putting it all together. A big thanks also goes out to all those of you who joined and watched the live stream, especially those of you who perhaps lent your advice and made the whole build a much smoother process. So let's go ahead and name this contraption something super corny, like the Hall of Knowledge, because knowledge is what you'll need if you want to get through it. Man, if only I knew how to be funny. That would be wonderful. Anyway, the way it's going to work is in each room you'll have either a sign or perhaps a map. I should explain the concept of maps really quickly. The way it's going to work is this idea was thought up by some of the guys on the Voxel Box who never cease to amaze me at their awesomeness. And the way it's going to work is rather than you having to necessarily read signs in a certain portion of the map, we've got a way of placing images on maps, actual in-game cartograph type maps that generally you walk around in order to fill out. And that's how you're going to read different challenges and whatnot. So no more having to go back and reread signs. If you forget the exact instructions, you simply look down at your map and it will reminds you. So it should be pretty darn cool. And big shout out once again to the Voxelbox guys because they are awesome. So that said, uh, either the sign or the map will pose a question to you and it's just multiple choice. Each of these buttons will correspond to a different answer, one of them correct and two of them not correct. In this case, the leftmost button is the correct answer. You press it, the doors open for a split second, just enough time to allow you to walk on through into the next room. If you get it wrong, however, well, it's not too good. The floor is going to open up on you, and you're going to fall down to the ground. And in the case of the actual build, which is this building right over here, that results in you having to work your way through a piston lava course jump thing. Piston jump course over lava. And there's a good chance you could die doing that if you make a misstep. So, unless you're a masochist, try to get the question correct. So there are actually three variations of this. One for each different button being the correct answer. In this case, it's the left one. In that one over there, I think it's the right button is correct. And in the one over on my left, I think it's the middle button is correct. But the only differences in wiring are within a couple blocks of the actual buttons. So there's really no need to go in detail on all of them. I'll just go over this one really quickly here. So the way it works, if you actually hit the correct button, pulse goes through these repeaters and it ends up in this branch of wiring and it splits off in two directions. One goes up and over the top and over to the pistons on the left side of the door. And this one, we'll just continue on for now, goes into the pistons on the right side. And currently they're being held open, this cluster of four, but when you input the pulse, it inverts this torch, turning it off for a split second. And then these repeaters deactivate and the pistons retract allowing you to go through. Same thing happens on the other side, it's just that the current travels up and over. Once again, same exact mechanism over here. Now, say you answer incorrectly, the current will pulse into either one of these repeaters, ending up in this bit of wiring right here. Again, it branches off in two directions, one going over to the left side, one staying over on the right. We'll follow the right side again for now. Goes down here, and it activates all these repeaters, in turn disabling the torches that are under these pistons. The pistons retract and the floor opens up. Same mechanism on each side, current travels over the top. And exact same thing happens with the repeaters and torches over on this side and you fall through the floor. Now, just for those of you who want to make sure that you cannot say, press the incorrect button, but then really quickly spam the correct button and get through, it shouldn't be possible. You will fall through the floor before you are able to uh, actually work your way into the door. So now the other two really quickly give an overview. In this one, the right button is the correct answer. The other two will open the floor on you. Again, I'll really quickly point out the differences. In this one, the middle wire leads out to the correct pulse. There really isn't too much of a difference except right here. Now in this one, the middle button, once again, opens the door. The other two will open the bottom. Now let's move on over to the actual build where I used MC Edit to tile a whole bunch of them in line. 
For the time being, in all these rooms, the correct answer is the leftmost button because obviously I don't want you knowing all the correct buttons to press when you're actually going to be playing the map. So of course, I will switch it all up in the finished product. But what happens if you get it wrong over here? You actually fall through into this underbelly area onto a glass platform that's over some lava and there's a button right here. And what that does when you click it is it releases a whole bunch of pistons and you get to work your way through the jump course and hopefully not die. For the time being though, the jump course doesn't stay out for very long. I haven't adjusted the timing, but the way that whole system works is when you press a button, the current travels down any one of these stair paths and it goes into this wire that runs along parallel to the whole contraption. Now that will send a pulse into this piston, which is part of an RS nor latch. It's just a different way to make one, this time with pistons. I thought I'd use it for some variety. It extends this piston, putting the block in front of the repeater, allowing the current to travel through into this wire. And then under here, it's really dark, but all the pistons are simply wired up and they'll extend, pushing a stone block out so that you can jump on them across the lava. Now at the same time, we have this branch of wiring that goes off into this whole set of repeaters. And finally, when the current reaches the end here, it outputs into the other piston, pushing the block back into its original starting position and the current no longer can travel through and all the pistons retract. Now for the time being, all these are on a one tick. I could just as easily set them all to four ticks and the pistons would stay out four times longer, allowing you to make it through the entire jump course. And of course, the jump course just works by you going all the way around, and then there will be a path leading right back up to the beginning where you have to try again. So that's, my friends, is how it all works. It looks like a lot of wiring, but really the concept of it all is pretty simple and should be kind of fun to try out when it comes to the finished product. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching. If you have, it would be awesome. If you wouldn't mind taking half a second to leave a rating, I do appreciate it. And other than that, quick updates on the whole puzzle contest. I think I will stop accepting submissions to it tonight. And then within the next couple of days, I'll try to choose some of the best. If you guys want to go through as well and leave comments on that video as to which ones you liked. I don't expect anyone to go through all of them. I think there are like 380 responses at this point. It's a lot. But if one catches your eye, let me know. And that's about it. If you haven't caught any of the streams yet, and that sounds like something you might be interested in doing, there's info on that in the description. But that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.